the WAC in 2005. Western Kentucky won the Sun Belt in 2012 and 2013. In the regular season, each team won on its home floor, but UTEP did a good job of scoring with this high-octane Western Kentucky offense. We'll see if the Miners can keep pace again today. With a Conference USA title and a spot in the NCAA tournament, UTEP begins with the ball in the hands of Zid Powell. We'll see if they're going to look to play inside out or get some sort of isolation play for Tay Hardy to start this game. Tay Hardy obviously got to stay out of foul trouble tonight. He fouled out of that last game. Hardy had 27 points in the win over Western Kentucky and four steals. Maybe you mentioned the amazing steals numbers. They had 12 versus Sam Houston. Aggressive D all day long from UTEP. Never Here give is. up on plays. And here's the ISO I was talking about for Hardy. Tries to drop it off, nearly take it away. Shot clock winding down. Sid Powell will have to heave it. Follow up off the miss. How about a third chance? Finally, a tie up jump ball will get it to Western Kentucky. So UTEP gets three looks on the opening possession. That ball didn't even hit the rim. No, so the shot clock should yeah. not have been reset, although it was. And rebound is going to be a big key. Obviously, with Western Kentucky, they shot the ball so well from the field. They only had seven offensive rebounds compared to uh, UTEP's 11 offensive rebounds. Don McHenry, number two for Western Kentucky, their leading scorer, first team all-conference USA. Here's Lander in tight, the senior who gets the start in place of Dante Allen coming off the 15-point performance versus Middle Tennessee. Yeah, and there's really no drop-off because Lander, he was exceptional in that last game, and he is a starter. Into the corner. The first three is a miss off the hands of Otis Frazier, the third. Henry and the Hilltoppers will push tempo at every chance. And it's pretty cool when you have a guy like Landers that comes off the bench with Rodney Howard, who will be in soon. Newman leaves it short, boarded by Zid Powell. Corey Camper Jr. had 19 in the win over the one seed, Sam Houston. The two seed in the Conference USA Tournament, Louisiana Tech lost in the quarters. Nice block. Babakar Fa, the junior from Senegal, gets the block shot. And a lot of times when you're playing against a shot blocker who's three-quarter in the post, you may have to use that punt take in that situation. Couldn't really reverse layup there with his left hand because there was some weak side help, but a little bit of a punt fake, hit the big fella off of his feet. Back into the hands of Tay Hardy, the senior from Ellenwood, Georgia. Hardy finds Zid Powell. That's a shot clock violation as... UTEP doesn't get a shot off. That's the second turnover by the Miners. Now, remember, aggressively here, a little bit of a collision. That could have easily been a foul. Western Kentucky over 20 wins for the 48th time in program history. And Western Kentucky on those pick and rolls, they're going to jump it really hard. McHenry attacks. Floats and a tough runner for Don McHenry. 4 nothing start for the Hilltoppers. When Western Kentucky beat UTEP in Bowling Green, McHenry had 25 points, 11 from the free throw line. Frazier bumped on the way to the hoop. Yeah, when you first team all Conference USA, this is the type of moves you make. He knows how to score the ball. He's a professional scorer. McHenry gets the foul on the other end. First personal. Broke out of a little three-game shooting slump in that last game. So that was nice to see. Frazier, the junior from Buckeye, Arizona. Joe Golding is effusive in his praise of this team. Big-time roster turnover for UTEP this year. He really likes this bunch of miners. Talked about the defense for UTEP. It turns into 16 fast-break points a game. That is third most in the nation. And instead, they struggled a little bit on the road. Then they had a breakthrough game against Jacksonville State, but he really loves the confidence of his team in the chemistry. Lander launches a three. Boarded by Corey Camper, Jr. 
taken away by Christian Lander. And giving it right back is Camper. So a steal for both sides. Rejected inside. Blocked by Tyrone Marshall Jr. Yeah, a little sloppy play here for both teams. Baugh kicks out. Three ball won't go for Marshall. I'm just blown away a lot of times with UTEP. You think they're beat on the play? And they're like defensive backs and cornerbacks. They come out of nowhere to steal passes. 0 for 5 shooting start for UTEP. Camper back it down. Ripped away by McHenry. Henry draws two defenders. Faw spinning inside. Off the glass for Babakar Faw. And this is the wrong team to turn the ball over. UTEP cannot turn the ball over against this team. They play too fast. An offensive juggernaut. They lead Conference USA in scoring. 80.5 points a game. Amazingly, four turnovers and nearly a fifth already for UTEP. And now Hardy rejected again. A run out. Newman. Nice. Marshall lost it. Ball picks it up. Dunks it down. An 8-2 start for Western Kentucky. And Coach Golding, we talked to him before the game, and he said, we got to avoid scoring routes. Because, you know, this is a team that can go on a 14-0 run Western Kentucky with the best of them. Powell misses. There's a follow. Finally, the first bucket, Kalu. Wipe out the bucket. It's an 8 2 Western Kentucky game. So, ball security is very important. You don't want to beat yourself. You're limiting your opportunities to get free throws, threes, offensive rebounds, but you never get a shot at the basket. Kevin Kalou finally get the ball in the hoop for UTEP, and it was wiped out with an offensive foul. Out of the timeout, Tyrone Marshall Jr. makes it an early eight-point Western Kentucky lead. Man, and that's really going to loosen up this UTEP defense and set up three-point shots and shooting attempts for Western Kentucky. David Terrell Jr. launches an air ball. It is an 0 for 8 shooting start for UTEP. Terrell, the freshman of the year, coming off the bench with an air ball. Yeah, Western Kentucky, they just look like the fresher team right now. UTEP you used a lot of energy to win that game on yesterday. Well, this is maybe a little bit too early to point out. They have come from double digit behind twice so far in this tournament, but down eight early, and nothing is going right for UTEP. 0 for 8 shooting with four turnovers. And we talked to Coach Lutz about you know, being the fresher team, especially since they had a large margin of victory. He wasn't able to overuse anyone. Tegan Moore, the freshman from Dry Ridge, Kentucky, off the bench for Western Kentucky. They will go deep into the bench. Haven't seen Dante Allen yet. Moore misses in tight. Fight for the offensive rebound. Ripped away by Tay Hardy for UTEP. Hardy pulls up. Another miss over nine from the floor. Run down by Terrell Jr. to keep it alive. But out of bounds to Western Kentucky. Team up. Hang on. Take the ride. PBR teams coming this July. That's Dante Allen on the bench, the senior who averages over eight points for Western Kentucky, but out with an injured knee. And what was a game-time decision doesn't bode well for Dante Allen playing for Western Kentucky. But the consolation prize for Western Kentucky? Rodney Howard, the Conference USA six-man of the year. Newman tries a three. There's the first triple for Western Kentucky. And it's a double-digit lead. 9-0 run, Hilltoppers. Brandon Newman was 3-for-3 three three from three in the last game. That's a foul called in tight. Looks like it's on Columbe. It'll be his first personal. Getting tangled up with Derek Hamilton. See, a lot of times when you're in that hard three-quarter front in the post, your weak side 
bottom man must be in position to try to force that skip pass. UTEP goes small ball a lot. That's part of the aggressive defensive mentality. So Hamilton comes off the bench as the big man, but he only plays seven minutes a game. We well, played 13 minutes on yesterday, and uh, you know, had nine points. Did a nice job. So the only four points of the game for UTEP have come from the foul line. Still over from the floor. Lander running point. Colin Bay stops in the paint, turns around and misses. Rebound by Calvin Solomon. Looks like he got away with a little travel. Look for Weston to really shrink their defense. Another turnover. That's turnover number five by the Miners. You notice Western Kentucky, they're closing out short to uh, UTEP. They want to force UTEP to try to beat them over the top. Nice backdoor pass. Tegan Moore finishes it off. Timeout UTEP as Western Kentucky is dominant early in the Conference USA title game. A double-digit lead for right here on CBS Sports Network. Carter Blackburn, Avery Johnson, Tiffany Blackman from Huntsville, Alabama, where Western Kentucky is red hot to start, and the UTEP Miners are ice cold. A little full court pressure to start. Now backing up into their half court defense, Western Kentucky. Seven minutes in, UTEP doesn't have a made field goal. There's another turnover. Newman, run out. Hero off the window, 17 to 4. Was he going to Paris? Where was he going? London, that was a nice Euro step. And right now, Western Kentucky has 10 points off of UTEP's turnovers. UTEP has a donut, zero. And six turnovers. Almost the seventh regen foul called on Rodney Howard. Active hands here playing the passing lanes. That's not just on the passer, the guy that's receiving the ball, his teammate. He's got to get to a point of no return is what we've called it, and now go back door because your defender is out of position. When you've turned it over six times in seven and a half minutes, there's plenty of blame to go around. Yes. Terrell into the paint, kick out. Frazier tries a three. 0 for 10 shooting start, including 0 for 4 from 3. Yeah, they play right into uh, Western Kentucky hands. You got to make that extra pass. This is their game. Finally, a run out chance, and Frazier has the first bucket for UTEP. Eight minutes in, UTEP has its first field goal. Yeah, and when UTEP gets back on offense, look for freshman Trey Hart in the third to get a little bit more involved. He can knock down the three. Moore's three spins out, booted by Frazier. Here's Terrell Jr. They missed him. He was open in the left corner. Down to Hamilton, who lost it. Back into the hands of Terrell. And here's Horton for three, just as you predicted, Avery. A freshman from Charlotte, first base three for UTEP. Oh, great hustle. Great hustle by Hardy to get back. And now Tay Hardy well, pushes the Miners. He's got Harden open. Lost him. That was touch. Scooped up by Newman for Western Kentucky. Then Terrell gets it back. UTEP wins the battle for the loose ball. Lob to Frazier, who gets fouled by Columbe. That'll be the second on Columbe. Well, it took eight minutes for UTEP to finally get a bucket. Appropriately enough, all team doesn't have an opportunity to get their defense set. It's so hard, especially when you're playing a team for the third time. You basically know all of their set plays. That's just like a, somewhat of an NBA playoff series. At some point, you can tell a guy if he's out of position. He can be in another spot. But hey, here's our guy Horton. Horton talked about. Second made three. It's an 8-0 run for Utah. He's the one guy that can get really hot from behind that three-point line, and UTEP desperately needs three-point shooting. He made 13 threes during the regular season. He's made three triples here in the conference tournament in Huntsville. Yeah, and he tried to run like a little bit of a screen door play. 
Western Kentucky did a good job of sniffing it out, but he still made that contested three. Personal foul was on Tay Hardy. First team foul on Utah. Here's McHenry, misses the three, into the hands of Hardy, running the minors. Tay Hardy, kick to Terrell Jr. Nice, nice look inside, Kalu dunks it down. And that's what happens with big guys. Hey, if you want to eat, Kalu knows rim run every single time. His teammates are going to find him if he's open. The minors charge back with a 10-0 run. Two feet inside, and Howard finishes the Conference USA Sixth Man of the Year, former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket and Georgia Bulldog. What's in Kentucky? I know they realize, independent of how UTEP looks, they're never out of the game. Gordon finally misses a three, fight for the rebound, won by Lander. Christian Lander, Marshall on to Tegan Moore. Howard wants it at the post with Kalu with the front, knocked away. Good defense on the help side from Frazier. Yeah, and that's where UTEP wants to bring that double team. That's a charge. It is offensive foul called on Otis Frazier. Eighth turnover by UTEP. So on post defense, some teams like the double team from the top, but UTEP's gonna, going to trap from the bottom. And right here on that drive, you, you got to come to a two-foot jump stop. The play is over. Find your teammate. Just make the easy play. Credit Tegan Moore with taking the charge. For the All-CUSA freshman team. Terrell almost went for the steal on McHenry. Now McHenry backs out, gets a screen from Fa. Aggressive D from the Miners. Lander lost the handle, gets it back, lost it on the way up, taken away by Solomon. Here's a run out for Hardy. Off the steal, Tay Hardy with the bucket. Timeout Western Kentucky as the Miners come charging back. It's a three point game. We step aside for 30 seconds. Proud of it. Um, just when you think you have a comfortable lead, <laughs> Here they come. They were. They started off 0 for 10. Now they're 5 for 6 cents. They started off 0 for, 0 for 10. Coming out of the Western Kentucky timeout, Don McHenry runs the offense through Babacar Paw. Paw oh, with a handle. Shot fake. Nice move from the big man. Marshall is fouled on the stick back. It's on Tay Hardy, and that is his second. So Hardy is in foul trouble again for the Miners. And he'll have to come out of the game with 8.51 to go in the first. Yeah, Barbara called fall. He was really good on yesterday, 11 points in 18 minutes. Kid from Senegal, we talked about that. Played two years at the College of Charleston. That's a hold. Now another... Yeah, that's on Kalu. And that'll be his second. Getting tangled up with Fah. Five team fouls now on UTEP. Kalu out of the game with two. So John Dosanjos into the game for the minors. And this is where teams like to try to steal a basket. If they're underneath out of bounds, have like a little bit of a wrinkle. Oh, that's out of bounds off of Fah. He thought it was touched by Jos Anjos, but it's UTEP basketball. Good D from the Miners. Let's see if UTEP can cut into this lead and cut it down to one or, or maybe tie the game up on this possession. Six steals by UTEP. Jos Anjos launches a three, boarded by five. They ran the same play for Trey Horton. A little flare screen. Misdirection. He had a couple of good looks. Marshall thought about the three, and now McHenry straight away rattles it home. Don McHenry's triple, five points for Western Kentucky's leading score. Unlike when we talked about Western Kentucky closing out short to UTEP, you have to close out above the three-point line and run a guy like McHenry. McHenry off the, off the three-point line. Solomon shot fake, spins it in around Babacar Fah. 
UTEP getting back on defense, so Western Kentucky unable to play at full tempo. Lander nearly lost it and somehow gets it to spin in on the way up. That's a tough play for the former Indiana Hoosier, Christian Lander. Yeah, that was a physical drive. Ball was deflected, and he was still able to get control of it. Zid Powell in the paint. Fa gets a block, but foul called on Babacar Fa. So Don McHenry, nice little shot here. That closeout was too short. Got well, Joe Golding won the Southland twice with Abilene Christian, but as he mentioned, it's been a while, 2011, since UTEP has played. In a Conference USA Championship game, they went at large to the NCAA Tournament in 2010 under Tony Barbie. But they have come from behind twice versus Liberty and Sam Houston. They trail by 13 against this Western Kentucky team. So you cannot question the fight from the UTEP Miners. And another thing he wanted us to know was that he's really good friends with Coach Lutz. Right. That those guys go way back to incarnate word in San Antonio where I practice before they had practice facilities with <laughs> <laughs> teams <laughs> or college teams. During the San Antonio Spurs days, right? Yes, sir. And both from the Chris Beard coaching tree. Marshall in tight. Off the window. Fight for the rebound. Loose ball. Faw picks it up. Gets bumped. That's a foul. Off. Foul on the floor on Dos Anjos. Big rebound for Babacar Faw. Yeah, and that's their 16 foul. So we'll see if um, Western Kentucky get in the bonus. You gotta give it to both of these teams. Though. They're hustling. They're trying. I know they've made some mistakes with, with the basketball and turning it over some, but the effort is there. Ball back and down on Calvin Here's Solomon. Right. Here comes the double team from the baseline. Nice job of getting rid of it. Missed three, boarded by Frazier. David Terrell Jr., the freshman from Dallas, running point. For the Miners, he plays big minutes off the bench for Utah. Into the post, Vaughn knocks it away from Solomon. Another steal for Western Kentucky. Lob ahead. Newman gathers. Fa finishes. More defense to offense for Western Kentucky. Yeah, beautiful and selfish play by Brandon Newman. Sure, Fa's going to get the credit for making the layup, but Newman, he made his teammate better on that play. That's winning basketball. Six steals for Western Kentucky. Frazier in tight off the shot fake. He draws a foul on Tyrone Marshall Jr. So we talked about it even in our open. Who can capitalize on mistakes? You know, here's beautiful defense, swarming the basketball. But here's the key right here. The big fella still running, not giving up on the play. Frazier to the free throw line mentioned yesterday, 73 steals, second in Conference USA, but Arturo Dean of FIU led the nation with 104 steals. Frazier gets the first. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. UTEP six for seven from the free throw line. When they beat Western Kentucky, they knocked down 24 free throws and the win against the Hilltop. Yeah, I find it kind of strange when UTEP doesn't have any of their players on the line. They'd be able to get an offensive rebound if, if there's a miss. Faw finishes off a great look from Newman. And one. We know Newman is capable of making the three, but he's showing us also he can put the ball on the floor and quarterback his team. Get downhill here, going left. Nice short pass. Beat the rotation from the backside. Eight points, four rebounds already for Baba Karpa, who has the first free throw for Western Kentucky and gives the Hilltoppers a nine-point lead. They've led by as many as 13 in the first half. And it's really been the bench for UTEP that's kept them in this game. 
Zid Powell for three. Off a look from David Terrell Jr. A third made three for UTEP. Tay Hardy back into the game with two personal fouls. See, on this swing, there was zero closeout. This is strategy. It wasn't like the, you know, the closeout defender made a mistake. No, that's they want to allow a Zid Powell to take all the threes he wants. Lander misses, boarded by Zid Powell, the 6'4 senior. Solomon on the run, drops it off. Powell off the window. Zid Powell makes it a four-point game. Powell, the senior from Philly, played last year at Buffalo. It'll be pretty interesting to see how long Dryden Howard stays out of the game. I think they got to get him back in the game. Nice feed from Fa to McHenry in the corner, boarded by Hardy. Because really, they, they don't have a true half-court inside-out game when Howard is on the bench. Howard's only played four minutes in this first half. Defense, 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 defense. And he's not in foul, so he, he hasn't committed a foul. Shot clock at five. Powell launches a deep three and nails it. Western Kentucky's playing off of Powell. He's making a pay. Yeah, they may have to rethink that strategy. <laughs> An 8-0 run, and UTEP has a chance to take the lead. I mean, he's, he shot that three from a couple of steps from behind the line. Look at him. Wow. Look at the rotation on that ball. Beautiful shot. He's only a 24% three-point shooter, so you can understand why Western Kentucky's playing off. Oh, yeah, you understand the strategy, but this is when you have to readjust your strategy in-game. I've been there a million times. Two made threes early for Zid Powell. Four triples for UTEP. They fought back from 13 down to make it a one-point game. Hardy with a feed inside. Hamilton backing in. Follows his miss. That's a tie-up UTEP ball. And the Miners will have another chance to take the lead. The big Hamilton is giving them terrific energy. He's got his size. You know, when you look at him, he's 6'10 and going against another guy, 6'11 with Howard, so he's not giving up much. Oh, Hardy stepped out of bounds. Turnover. Number 10 for the Miners. You remember what my yes, word I is? Do. Those, yes, I do. Yes, Those are non-negotiables. I'm subbing you out on that turnover. Well, Joe Golding wants to see Tay Hardy on the floor, <laughs> so he's rolling with his top scorer right now. you got to adjust your thought process when it comes to your best play, right? <laughs> Sometimes there's different rules, right? Kick to Newman for the three. Boarded by Frazier. So Another saying, chance for UTEP. Yeah, you're saying if Tay Hart is late for the bus, right. he still starts. Exactly. I know some of those <laughs> tricks. You make sure you're the last one on the bus, right? <laughs> Hamilton at the high post on the Corey Camper Jr. Powell crosses over into the paint. Powell floats it. Air ball off the hands of... Newman, it's going to be UTEP ball with just 1.2 to shoot. We have a one-point game at CUSA. The athletic training staff has been keeping close eyes on when sunrise and sundown are. Since he's not consuming food or water, you know, between those periods, so as needed, he has eaten granola bars on the bench once the sun goes down during late games. And with tonight's 7.30 local start, well, the training staff, they had a sandwich ready for him to eat before taking the floor, guys. So and he's putting on quite a show this evening. Indeed, he has nine of the last ten points for UTEP. So Powell leading the cover behind effort. Quick trigger with a shot clock winding down. Hardy misses the three. Now Rodney Howard is back in the game. Camper gets the steal. Run out for the Miners. That's goaltending. UTEP on top from down 13 in the first half. The Miners lead it by one. This is their game. Steel City. They'll take your lunch from you. And this team, not only do they have quick hands, 
from end to end. I mean, all these guys must run a what? A 4 4 40. Seven steals. UTEP averages 11 and a half, the nation's best. McHenry earns a trip to the free throw line with 2.53 to go before the half. Coming up on AT&T at the half. Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Renee Montgomery, John Rothstein, and Jerry Palm get you caught up on all the conference tournaments and the latest news from around the country that's coming up on AT&T at the half. Wally Zerbiak would love to play for Western Kentucky because he can knock down the three. You know, that would fit right into his game. <laughs> the big man who can step outside. Yes, sir. A lot to get you caught up on around college basketball, including New Mexico. Making sure they're off the bubble and in the NCAA tournament. McHenry gets them both. Western Kentucky back up by one. And when you're an elite three-point shooting team and scoring team like Western Kentucky or, and UTEP defensively, number one in the nations in steals, you get in the NCAA tournament, you know, these teams are not necessarily be one and done. They can make some noise. Camper hits the three. The fifth made three of the first half for UTEP Miners back on top. Yeah, and if UTEP is making threes, it's lights out. Western Kentucky's gone almost four minutes without a field goal. Newman off the window to end that drought. Former Boilermaker at Purdue, where Steve Lutz was an assistant. And you always talk about finishing plays, but now who can finish to have? Pal, nice dish. Frazier took a bump, play on. Hamilton, that's a tie up. Western Kentucky ball. Well, our Bracket Week headline did is now 20 number one seeds, including here in Conference USA with Sam Houston went down. Duquesne versus VCU A-10 championship tomorrow on CBS. That will be a bid stealer as Dayton's going in at large. Yeah, that's going to be a really... <laughs> McHenry off the window. And we talk about Duquesne Day Day Grant. Oh, he puts it in the basket. He was six or nine from three in that semifinal game. 27 points. A foul called on Camper. McHenry has nine points to lead Western Kentucky. And 18 versus Middle Tennessee in the semifinal win for the Hilltoppers. Junior College All-American. Last year at Indian Hill Community College after his freshman year at Hawaii Hilo. And junior from Milwaukee is a scorer for Western Kentucky. He has 10. Now Trey Horton's back in the game. Frazier drives on Howard. Shot fake. Howard stands his ground. Newman couldn't handle the rebound. It's out of bounds. Western Kentucky ball. Yeah, when you drive and you have a big guy like Rodney Howard step up, and you're trying to pivot to score the basketball, you have to find your teammates. See, this this shot right here is too off balance. Move the ball. That's what Coach Golding has been talking about over and over again. Bad shots, they don't get counted as a turnover, but it's like a turnover. UTEP can't handle any more turnovers. Marshall, tough runner for Tyrone Marshall, Jr. Senior from Nashville, second year as a Hilltopper. Seven straight for Western Kentucky in a game of runs. Powell attacks. Fouled on the way to the hoop. That's a blocking foul on Tegan Moore trying to draw the charge. Yeah, total confusion here on that pick and roll. If you notice, uh, Howard was supposed to jump out and impact the ball, but he was, he was out of position. Zip Powell had the all-around night versus Liberty when UTEP knocked off the four-seed Flames. 13 points, seven rebounds, four assists. And that quarterfinal win, nine points, although he has missed a pair of free throws so far for UTEP. Then Zip went to high school in Philadelphia, Overbrook High School. Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain's out of line. David Terrell Jr. back in the game. Powell gets a break. Ten points in the first half for Zid Powell. 
So we're down to about two possessions here in this first half. We'll see if uh, UTEP can get a stop. Moore gets around Trey Horton the third. After the drought for Western Kentucky, when they went over four minutes without a field goal, they've made four straight buckets against the UTEP D. So where does UTEP go for offense on this possession? Are they going to run a misdirection? Maybe Corey Camper Jr. swinging around to him here on this left wing. Frazier crosses over, attacks, and draws a foul. It's before the shot. So don't count the basket, says Jeb Hardness. Fouls on the floor. One and one coming after that first personal foul on Brandon Newman. Yeah, one more step by the defense. That could have been a charge. But fortunately, it worked out. Who made that last call? Jeb Hardness. Oh, okay. I'm agreeing with him now because I'm sitting over here. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you would have been counting the basket, right? Yes, count it. Frazier already three for four from the free throw line in this one. It's always nice for Jeb and the officials to come say hello to us before the game. Gary Maxwell, Jeb Hartness, and Amy Bonner are officiating crew for the Conference USA Championship. Shot clock turned off. So if they execute this to perfection, they'll attempt this shot with around five seconds. Howard gives it up. Under five seconds now. UTEP teeing up McHenry. Newman doesn't get a shot off. So the Miners D it up on the last possession. Western Kentucky leads by four at the half. And that's why in those situations, you have to... Old start for UTEP. They missed their first ten shots. Western Kentucky got off to a 17-4 to four start. So when Joe Golding talked to Tiffany in that first half, he said we want to be in the game at the half. Four points to begin the second half. They're right there. Again, UTEP tried to run a little bit of an isolation play to start the half. For Tay Hardy. Just the second bucket for UTEP's leading scorer, Tay Hardy, who sat for the last seven minutes of that first half with two personal fouls. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> the first half of this game, he didn't commit a foul. That's tipped away. It's another turnover by Western Kentucky. Each team now has 10 turnovers in the game. And if I'm Coach Golding, I would think about playing Tay Hardy the entire second half. I wouldn't give him a break. Hardy finds Frazier in the corner. Now Zip Powell bought about another three. Powell launches and hits again. Powell has his third main three of the game. And Coach Lutz talked about it with Tiffany. We have to make an adjustment. We wanted to play Powell what we call cold, but now he's hot. You got to adjust. The first five points of the second half go to UTEP. Miners back on top, seeking their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2010. Hardy lost the handle. Palou has to come help him out. Powell tries another one. Black Powell, a 24% three-point shooter, has four made threes. UTEP by four. This is a prime example of March madness. <laughs> if the things that happen in March, you can have a three-point shooter that's shooting 24% from three get hot all of a sudden. He had made 18 on the season prior to tonight. Four made threes for the senior from Philly. McHenry has an answer for Western Kentucky. That's been their strength this game. We showed it in the highlights, points in the paint. UTEP's got to do a better job of being more disciplined on drivers to contain the basketball. Camp returns the corner, ripped away. Foss scoops up the loose ball for Western Kentucky. Newman pokes Frazier, and now Newman looks like he's fouled by Kalu. That'll be the third on the junior big man for Baltimore. They yeah, got to really be happy for Pop. Going under the screen, that's a mistake against a guy that's really got confidence from behind the three-point line. You don't see a defender that's 
close enough. And now he's in a rhythm, man. That basket starts to get wider and wider. Sid Powell has 16 points to lead all scores. Brandon Newman misses the first. That's the first free throw miss by Western Kentucky. They were four for four. Malou comes out with three personals. Missed them both. That's one of the things Coach Lutz talked about. So we need to get to the free throw line more, but we gotta make them. Hardy on the wing. Draws two defenders, picks up the dribble. Solomon there to help him out. You gotta get the ball to the other side of the floor. If you only stay on the right side of the floor, you're not putting pressure on the defense. Marshall gets the steal, foul committed by Otis Frazier. That's the second personal on Frazier. On that little pocket pass or back to Otis Frazier, he's got to look to swing the ball to the other side. You saw the turnover numbers. Both teams have eight steals. That's on brand for UTEP and Western Kentucky has been aggressive defensively as well. Newman, runner off the window, won't go. Boarded by Solomon. Into the front court, another turnover, the 13th by UTEP. Lander brings it back for the Hilltoppers. Kick to McHenry. Tapped back into the hands of Lander. Feeds inside, why not another three, McHenry. This one misses as well. Rebound by Camper. Now UTEP's probably got to slow down the basketball, control tempo a little bit. If they were smart on this play, maybe try to get three or four passes, move the ball a little bit. Playing through Hardy. Back and down on Lander, and now Tay Hardy from the baseline. Tough fader, boarded by Solomon. Solomon right back up, blocked from behind by Fall. Blocked again by Fall. Terrific block. Down to the deck, that's a tie-up possession arrow to the other end. Babakar fall with back-to-back -back blocks. And when you go in and hear ch challenging shot blockers, you got a pump fake. That's not going to work. <laughs> that's like going up against the Kimbe Matambo. That's high praise. You're wagging your finger. Right. <laughs> Lander deed up by Camper. Drops it off for Marshall. Now into the corner again. Another missed three from McHenry. Fa on the offensive glass went over the back. Foul called on Babakar Fa. UTEP trailed by 13 in the first half, but the Miners charging back again in the second half. A two point lead. Kicked it in gear after that, and nice job by Middle Tennessee and uh, on to the NCAA tournament. Well, the one seed and the two seed both losing here in Huntsville, Alabama. The one seed, Sam Houston, in their first year in Conference USA, taken out in the semis by UTEP. Louisiana Tech, the two seed, was defeated in the quarterfinals. So three versus five for the one spot out of Conference USA in the NCAA tournament. Zid Powell attacking again, gets to the free throw line for UTEP. Yeah, a little dig for... Uh, no pun intended for the minor fan, Sam Houston, who was the regular season champ. Late win over Louisiana Tech to get that one seed. But they give up a double-digit lead. They were up 14 on UTEP. Again, the Miners have come from double digits down in both of their CUSA tournament wins. And they were down double digits early in this one, now lead it by three. And you know, one of the things to highlight about UTEP Right now, Western Kentucky is 2 for 13 from the three-point line. And the Miners, they only allow 5.8 made threes per game. That's the second fewest in the conference. So they're playing to their strength, and defending they, that three-point line. They make fewer than six threes a game on average. Already seven made threes in this one. That was kind of the befuddlement from Steve Lutz when he's talking to Tiffany at the half at how UTEP is shooting the basketball. That's a pretty good word. Thank you very much. Befuddlement. That's, 
That's, we, we have been befuddled at times this week. Right now, the offense befuddled by Western Kentucky. Haven't scored in almost three minutes. Third foul on Faw, so Rodney Howard back into the game for Western Kentucky. Newman throws it in reverse off the window. And even though Rodney Howard only has two points, you know, that's that's somewhat of an assist because the defense is paying so much attention to him, and he did a nice job of screening his own man. Derek Hamilton banging with Howard down low. There's Hamilton and one for the big man from Baton Rouge. Yep, Hamilton got deep here. Nice little left shoulder jump hook. Nice little reverse layup here by Newman. Transitioning to the other side of the basket. I don't know why players don't do that more often. Instead of going up on the strong side, get the shot block, and reverse it. Us little guys, we had to use all of those tricks. Ingenuity. Yeah. <laughs> Hamilton completes the three-point play. It's the largest lead of the game for UTEP. And Western Kentucky turns it over for the 11th time. After leading by 13 early. Again, Western Kentucky started this game 17-4 as UTEP missed its first 10 shots of the game. But the Miners have charged back. Trying to close out this improbable run as a five seed for the Conference USA Championship. Remember when we interviewed Coach Golding early, early on, he said, we just need to settle down a little bit. And they've definitely settled down. Neither of these teams has won a Conference USA tournament title. UTEP played for the title in 2010 and 2011. Western Kentucky has lost three trips to the CUSA title game. Tay Hardy. That's just his third bucket of the game for UTEP. Yeah, I think they're going to have to find another matchup and get Tegan Moore off of Hardy. I, that's a win for UTEP. McHenry, deed up by Solomon, launches a three, and finally it goes down after McHenry had missed his last three. He's not shy. <laughs> Just the third three-pointer of the game for Western Kentucky. And you can see now they switch Brandon Newman on to Hardy. Solomon backing down on Colombe. Off the shot fake, give it back to Zid Powell, who is thinking about another three, takes it. Oh, breaks this one, but a follow goes from Camper on the offensive glass. UTEP has outscored Western Kentucky 17 to 7 in the second half. Howard draws two defenders and a foul is called on Derek Hamilton. So here's the shot. Now everybody's got a box out. And McHenry, he was ball watching on that play. And nice finish there by Corey Camper Jr. All of those little things, not just steals, but offensive rebounds, second chance points, every everything matters. UTEP's not a great rebounding team, but they're plus four on Western Kentucky. Newman off the shot fake. Howard wants it on the block. Covered up by Hamilton. Good seal by Howard. Colombe can't finish. Miners bring it back. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to continue to drive those closeouts. Hardy takes it one on three and draws a foul on the floor. Looks like it's on Lander. You notice UTEP, and we talked to Coach Golden about this. He didn't really want Howard to touch the ball much in the paint. Remember he said he was going to three-quarter, front him, try to frustrate him. And if he caught the ball, they were trapping him from the baseline side. Western Kentucky hasn't adjusted to that aggressive post defense. That foul was on Newman, by the way, his second. Push shot won't go for Camper. Rebound, Colibay. Lander in the paint. That's a tough one, but the follow won't go. Colibay now a foul called on Hamilton, who gets his second personal.
you know Lander wants to get downhill to his left hand. He can't, he's capable of finishing with his right, but he's, he's a left-handed driver. Alibé, the junior from Quebec, who played two years at Indian Hills Community College. Five of seven from the free throw line for Western Kentucky. His coach from Quebec, Hank Plona, is one of the assistants on the staff. Got them both. Dante Allen, the senior, former Kentucky Wildcat, out with a bone bruise on his knee. Hasn't played in this game, was a game time decision, so Western Kentucky down one of its key players. Hardy lines up a three. Fight for the rebound, saved by Frazier, but into the hands of the Hilltoppers. Moore stops, that's an offensive foul. Terrell Jr. takes the charge. I don't know if he was set on that play. That's one of those bang bang plays. Tough one to call, let's take a quick look here. Yeah, he got there. Outside the circle. Yep, got his feet set. Conference USA Freshman of the Year, David Terrell Jr. Frazier behind the back. Frazier misses the tough floater. Loose ball on the deck. Lander has it for Western Kentucky into the hands of McHenry. And Lander did a nice job of getting there at the last minute. McHenry on the run, stripped by Camper. Out of bounds to Western Kentucky. So you see the drive here. He got stripped. Fortunately, it didn't go off of his leg. Hardy gets a break ahead of the under-12 timeout. Leads Conference USA in minutes played. And played almost all the second half, as you predicted. And on all of these drives against... UTEP, you got it strong with the ball, just like that. McHenry has 17. Western Kentucky's back within two. The Hilltopper fans on their feet here in Huntsville. Western Kentucky and UTEP both seeking their first Conference USA tournament titles. Rolling the big man, Hamilton can't finish. Boarded by Howard. McHenry off a good screen from Howard. Attacks. Lost it on the way up. Foul is called on Derek Hamilton. 17 points for Don McHenry, the junior from Milwaukee, as Western Kentucky's. And with 11.20 to go, we have a two-point game after Western Kentucky led by as many as 13 early on. And it's been back and forth between the Miners and the Hilltoppers. We talked about this. You know, earlier today, Carter, they, these teams, man, they're just so good at what they do. They play their identity. Uh, but when things are going wrong in one part of their game, they know how to adjust. And right now, for Western Kentucky, only having made one three-point shot, they're still adjusting. And now they're on the 6-0 run. Even again, there's Terrell Jr. missing in tight. Another all-out fight for the loose ball, won by Western Kentucky. Lander comes away with it. Hilltoppers a chance to take the lead. McHenry keeps the handle alive. 19 to lead all scorers in the game, Don McHenry. Crossover, step back, triple. Boarded by Camper for UTEP. And you would think, okay, that's a bad shot. That's not necessarily a bad shot for McHenry. And Western Kentucky with the way they like to play in their style of play. Those same shots went down in their last game. Powell kicks to Frazier. Misses the three. Three on two here. Lander pulls up off the window. Western Kentucky on top. And beautiful move by Lander because you know, you're taught on a three on two. If nobody stops the ball, finish it. Make a defender commit to you before you pass. So a defensive lapse in the open court as well. 
Dribble handoff, Zid Powell comes to get it. 18 points to lead all UTEP scores. Powell, that may have been a pass to Kalu. Regardless, it's out of bounds to Western Kentucky. Yeah, I love this fast break here. He, here you see a three on two. Might have really picked up the ball or stopped the ball. And then Lander just continued. Fortunately, the defender for him didn't step up and try to take a charge. Two head coaches who have guided a previous programs into the NCAA tournament. Steve Lutz at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Joe Golding at Abilene Christian. Both seeking their first NCAA tournament appearances with UTEP and Western Kentucky, respectively. Keegan Moore off the bounce, draws a foul. And I was just thinking, man, Tegan Moore, you know, he's, he's got to be a little bit more aggressive to score. Fouls on Kevin Kalu, his fourth. 16 fouls now on UTEP. A lot of times you have those freshmen, they want to fit in, you know, but this is March, man. The championship game tomorrow at 4 Eastern, get ready to hit the dirt for the toughest eight seconds in sports as the world's top bull riders face off at Little Rock, Arkansas. Catch PBR Unleash the Beast here on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, when you've had 3,000 points and 1,000 rebounds in your career in high school, you know how to score <laughs> <laughs> Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Four fouls for Palou, three for Hamilton, so both big men in foul that's trouble. Foul. Yeah, that's a foul called on Lander. It'll be his first personal, 16 fouls on the Hilltoppers. That could have been a foul on Landers. Or Newman, he reached in right there at the end. The Hilltopper fans disagree. Both teams have 16 fouls. we to keep our eyes on it. Western Kentucky program that has won a total of 33 conference tournaments back to 1932. But their last two were as members of the Sun Belt before they joined Conference USA a decade ago. And you've alluded to it several times. Both of these coaches, they know what an NCAA tournament team looks like. They know how to get you there. Attacking Hardy. Bumped and play on. Lander finds a trailing. Newman thought about the three. Colibay dumps it off. Howard dunks it down. Timeout, Utah. On the tournament. And uh, fortunately upset uh, Virginia Tech in the first round and lost to Villanova. But it's it's a whole family affair. Trust me. You mentioned a lot of respect between Joe Golding and Steve Lutz. They go all the way back to the Incarnate Word days. Out of the timeout. Camper gives it up. Solomon lost it on the way up. Gets his own miss. And then throws it away into the hands of Tegan Moore. On the run. Moore, that's a hard foul. Moore hits the deck. The 16th turnover by UTEP. Now, unlike UTEP's mistake, Western Kentucky did a nice job when they double teamed the post to make sure they flooded the paint. Nice steal by Tegan Moore, and then he was off to the races. Well, you wanted Moore to be more aggressive. He gets to the rim and gets to the free throw line. Western Kentucky shoots a lot of free throws. That's 10 of 13 in this game. That's a little bit behind what they usually shoot. I love when players respond to our suggestions. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're coaching again, right? Four gets them both. It's a 13-0 run for Western Kentucky. And this is where Western Kentucky really gets teams going on these late spurts in games. Razor cut off on the baseline, has to throw it back out to Tay Hardy. UTEP's leading score, passes on it. He's not even looking to shoot in that situation, Frazier. Powell behind the back, lost it. Powell gets it back. 
Tie up. That's a jump ball. Possession to UTEP. 3.6 to shoot. See, if you're going to be in a position where Frazier is and you're not going to even look at the basket, you got to cut. But nice job here. They realize that Powell is a hot player. Jump out there and force him to find the nine shooter. Western Kentucky led this game 17 to 4 to start, then relinquished the lead to UTEP. The Miners have a history in this tournament of come from behind wins. Can they do it again in the championship game? Yeah, we talked about Western Kentucky having fresh legs. How is that going to benefit them? They didn't have a player play over 23 minutes in their last game because it was a blowout. Hamilton beats the buzzer. Derek Hamilton ends the drought. Of almost five minutes for Utah. McHenry pulls up off the screen from Howard. Nice screen from Rodney Howard. Well, and let's say that's not a great shot, but when you can take it and make it, it's a good shot. 21 now for Don McHenry. Hardy spins all the way to the rim for Tay Hardy. Hardy, that's the key, I believe, for Tay Hardy. He doesn't always need a pick and roll. Sometimes just let him isolate from the middle of the floor. Woo! McHenry again. 23 now for the first team all conference USA performer, Don McHenry. See, I just think that's a mistake. Camper. This is the three. Tap out, second chance for the Miners. Powell whips it into Hamilton. Lost it on the way up. Another turnover. Newman on the run for the Hilltoppers. I came here on the trail. 17 turnovers now for Utah. Now they will play pick and roll to try to get Hamilton involved. Offensive foul called on Western Kentucky. Don McHenry taking over for Western Kentucky. 23 points in the game now for the junior for Don McHenry. And for more, let's check in with Tiffany Blackman. Yeah, guys, it was quite the journey for him to get to Western Kentucky. He's a Milwaukee native, and he wasn't heavily recruited coming out of high school because of the pandemic. He ended up going to Hawaii, felt homesick. So he was hit the transfer portal, and there, assistant head coach, Hank Corona found him. And what a find they have now. Look at the season he's been able to put together, but he's definitely found the right home for himself, being able to transfer into Western Kentucky. 13 second half points for Don McHenry, stepping up in the championship game. Even though he's the only guy in double figures right now, and a couple of guys that's, you know, two guys that have nine points, seven points, so we've got a couple of guys approaching double figures. Zip Powell has 18 for UTEP. Picks up his dribble here. Calvin Solomon out to help him. Powell launches the three again. This one spins out, boarded by McHenry. That's a big key at the stage of the game when you're trying to protect the lead. Only allow one shot. Lander. A tough one. Boarded by Fa, puts it right back up, can't hit it. Rebound by Otis Frazier, and then a foul on Babacar Fa. That is his fourth. And a 1-1 one -one coming for Utah. It's a good way to slow the game now. Go back to that free throw line. We talked about it there. 12 for 15 from the line. Western Kentucky's 11 for 14. Correction, that last foul was on Colum Bay, his third. So that's a break as Faw still has three. Misses the front end. And again, this is so weird to me. That time, UTEP only had one player on the line. Unless the guy is shooting 100% from the line. A foul called on Solomon going for the loose ball with McHenry. Second personal on Solomon. One and one coming. Yeah, that's just 
a lot of contact on that play. But you see these guys diving on the floor, man. The first one to the floor normally wins. McHenry misses. That's his first free throw miss. This is the front end. UTEP has come from behind in the second half in both of its Conference USA tournament wins. 5.36 to go. Can the Miners do it again? That's ripped away by Lander. Lob ahead. Newman corrals it. Blocked from behind by Solomon. Out of bounds to Western Kentucky. Effort plays coming from behind. Watch this block. Fourteen steals now for Western Kentucky against the team who leads the nation in steals per game, UTEP. But we know UTEP has had problems with ball security. We got a switch here, the mismatch. This is a time to really look high low. McHenry floater. Count it. A lot of contact. The bucket goes 25 in the game now for Don McHenry. One of the adjustments UTEP can make is on those middle pick and rolls. It's forced McHenry to his right hand. Another steal by Western Kentucky. Newman drops it off. Columbus hits the deck hard. Looked like Hardy slipped. Yeah, I think he's going to be okay. Just kind of lost his footing there. Yep, he's okay. Remember, Western Kentucky's already playing without Dante Allen out with a knee injury and in the semis, but thankfully, Colin Bay looks like he's walking this one off. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, look like. Just slipped. Yeah, Jay Hardy slipped on that. That's what started that a little bit of an avalanche there. Two shots coming for Colin Bay, his second trip to the free throw line for the junior from Quebec. Free throw misses for Western Kentucky. And we didn't even jinx him. No. <laughs> we didn't even say anything about him. Western Kentucky, its fourth trip to the Conference USA title game. They lost the previous three under former head coach Rick Stansberry. Trying to end that drought with their first Conference USA title under Steve Lutz. The Hilltopper fans to their feet. And they're on their feet because they're on the 24 to run right now. And at some point, there's going to be limited possessions left in this game. Newman fouls. Powell will head to the free throw line. That's the third on Newman. So right now we have four minutes and four, 52 seconds left in the game. As you shared, UTEP has 17 turnovers. Now, now this is to turn your bad luck into a good luck. You can make these free throws maybe down eight. Every possession, the rest of this game, take care of the ball. Get a shot at the basket. Now get to the front end. Because if that 17 turnover number go to 20 turnovers, then it's over. There you see the foul trouble. Kalu has four, the only player in the game with four. Sid Powell gets them both. Back to an eight-point game. The Miners came from down 13 in the first half. Now another double-digit lead in the second half. Yeah. Marshall picks up his dribble on the wing. Lander comes to get it, and a little ticky-tack foul called on Corey Camper Jr. And see, this is what happens with a steal of Steve Carter. You know, you're down by eight, and you know, you're programmed to steal the ball, but you don't want to continue to send it Western Kentucky to the line. Both teams now in the double bonus. Yeah, you got to, this is the time to play defense without fouling. Lander, the senior from Evansville. He was huge in the semifinal win over Middle Tennessee. 15 points off the bench. Got the start tonight in place of the injured Dante Allen. And has a chance to put the Hilltoppers back up by double digits. And 
it's great to see Lander back. He missed the entire month of January. Powell attacks, hits the deck, kept the dribble alive. Terrell Jr., the freshman from Dallas, misses, but a foul is called. Terrell Jr. will head to the free throw line. A couple of times, players have really lost their footing here on, the, on several drives. So here, Powell, oh, he just kind of, his left foot just kind of went the wrong direction. Looks like Terrell may have lost a contact. Before his two free throws. He took a pop to the eye regardless. Yeah, yeah contact. Yeah. Looked like one of the assistant coaches found it. David Terrell Jr. mentioned the fun fact. He's the Conference USA Freshman of the Year. His mom, Kiana. A great player for UTAP was the WAC Freshman of the Year. Son David, the Conference USA Freshman of the Year. So they're going to allow him to put his contact back in. Ouch. Foul on McHenry was his second. When you're closing out, you, you want to try to make sure you contain that basketball. Really be disciplined on your closeouts. I mentioned when UTEP beat Western Kentucky, they made 24 free throws in that game. 14 from the free throw line in this game, and if the Miners are going to come back, it's likely going to be from the free throw line. We haven't seen much of Trey Horton in this second half, but between Trey Horton and uh, David Terrell Jr., some really good looking freshmen. Terrell rattles home the first of two. Miners part of a four-way tie for fourth place here in the regular season in CUSA. Terrell misses the second. Big Red approves. Temp's got to string together a couple of consecutive stops here or this game's going to be over. Their goal right now is not three stops in a row or four stops in a row. It's one stop, one stop at a time. Marshall to the rim. There's the stop. Powell gets the rebound. Sid Powell pushing the Miners. Stops, floats, misses. Boarded by McHenry. Big rebound for Don McHenry. Coach Lux is saying, the clock is your friend. Newman lost it. Fa goes to get it. Takes a bump. No call. <laughs> I don't know why Western Kentucky was in a rush. Timeout Western Kentucky may be discussing some time management. The Hilltoppers, 331 away from the NCAA tournament. Probably with the St. Patrick's Day parade. They went hard on oh St. Patrick's God. Day here in Huntsville, Alabama. We can attest. Did I see you walking outside in the parade? No. You were arrested for tonight's no, game? No, we were Good. scratching Good. out notes all day long, <laughs> watching hoops like everybody else. Western Kentucky, 331 away from its first Conference USA Tournament title under first-year head coach Steve Lutz, who guided Texas A&M Corpus Christi to the NCAA Tournament the last two years. Out of the timeout, a stop by UTEP. Hardy attacks for the Miners, drops it off, lost it. Frazier gets it back, it dumps it off. Solomon finishes. Yeah, excellent finish by Solomon inside. I'm just trying to figure out what is Western Kentucky trying to accomplish right now on offense, especially in that last possession with the wild drive to the basket by Lambert. Now it's more attacking, turns it over. 
Frazier gets it in the open floor. Dumps it off. Powell attack off the window. Play on. Powell hits the deck hard. He's holding his leg right now. McHenry takes a quick shot. Fall there on the offensive glass. Travel turned it over before the shot. Well, that was a big no call on the drive by Powell. So here's Powell on the drive. Wow. That, that, that was a foul. You got to call a foul in that situation. UTEP down seven. They came from down 13 in the first half. Yeah, Chief Moore, he was not in leading guarding position. A lot of time where Camper gets off the shot. Boarded by Lander. Western Kentucky gets a key stop. Newman tries a three. Spins out, rebound more. Lost it out of bounds. It was touched by a minor, so Western Kentucky ball not reviewable just outside of two minutes. So here you got to get the ball in clean. You got, if you're the inbounder, you know where you want to throw the ball, so you may want to fake a pass to make a pass, look one way to look the correct way, but you got to really get this ball in bounds with, without turning it over. Unfortunately, they did. Into the hands of McHenry, almost turned it over. Moore comes back to get it, and now on the dribble drive, Brandon Newman. Less than two to go. Hilltoppers by nine. And see in power. Utah did look exhausted right now. They used a lot of energy. Kalou gets it at the high post. Sid Powell finds Hardy. Bricks the three. Rebounded by Tegan Moore. Western Kentucky gets it across the timeline. Running clock in the half court. He's trying to foul. Foul is given. Zid Powell fouls. And that was not what Joe Golden wanted. He was yelling trap. Instead, the foul is given. Here's the Newman drive, splitting the defense. No shot blocking at the basket. That's definitely a foul. Two shots for Brandon Newman. But that's a great area, Carter, on the sideline. You're down nine, the trap without fouling, and maybe try to get a steal. Sideline is at third defender. Coming up next, the road to the final four continues as our hoops experts break down all the latest tournament play on inside college basketball right here on CBS Sports Network, including the ACC final between NC State and North Carolina. them both. Western Kentucky closing in on the Conference USA title. Western Kentucky want to play solid defense. Any pick and roll switch. Take away any and all threes. You don't want any three-pointers here. Well, that's a blocking foul called. Looked like it would have been, could have been offensive, but instead blocking foul called on Newman. Stops the clock. Powell gets to the free throw line. Could have been a push-off. A lot of times in that situation, especially if the defender beats you to the spot and you use that off hand. Big free throw miss by Zid Powell, who's been terrific tonight with 20 points, four rebounds, but Powell misses the first of two. This young man is giving it his heart tonight. I mean, he's giving it his all. Got hot from the three-point line and just couldn't get enough help from his teammates. Second one rattles home. But it's still a double-digit lead for Western Kentucky. Yeah, Coach Golden is going to a little offense defense here. Give Powell a quick break. We'll see if they look to quick foul here or trap again. Trouble getting it in for Western Kentucky. Into the hands of Lander. No foul yet. Across the timeline into the hands of Moore. 
keep away game for Western Kentucky. Now the foul is given by David Terrell Jr. Under a minute to go, a double-digit lead for the Hilltoppers. And man, look at the support from the Hilltoppers that have traveled here to Huntsville. The fans. It is a proud winning program. 58 seconds away from taking the next step back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2013. And it's funny, we talked to Coach Lutz about how they finished the regular season. He said, hey, <laughs> we finished the regular season on the road and we had the opposing team's three different senior nights. Four straight losses to close out the regular season, dropping Western Kentucky to the three seed. And now on the verge of its third straight win here in Huntsville to take the CUSA championship. Yeah, we've heard the quote, failure is in final only if you give up. And they didn't give up. Got hot at the right time. Desperation time for Utah. You can see here. West Kentucky, one through five switch. Hardy hits the three. Timeout, UTEP. Back to single digits. Hope for the Miners with 44.5. All the time. Especially at the end of practice, you practice press offense because you want to do it when the players are a little bit fatigued to try to you know, resemble what's going to happen in the game. Everybody's a, an option. You cannot hide from this basketball. Newman uses a timeout. There's one left for Western Kentucky. So credit UTEP with making the inbound tough for the Hilltoppers. Fifteen steals by Western Kentucky. Get it into Lander. Trap comes immediate. Lander. Gets rid of it, gets fouled by Frazier as he crosses midcourt. So, good job by Lander to get out of the pressure. Yeah, nice job of passing out of the trap. Here, splits it. But sometimes you can look up a little sooner, you can get a layup or a dunk. But give the inbounder credit, not just Lander, to get the ball in very effectively. Gets the first of two. Back to a double-digit lead. And I think the thought coming in for Coach Lutz is if they could get close to 80 points, you know, even though in the regular season, UTEP scored quite a few points. But again, this is multiple games in a row. Little fatigue could be setting in. They've, they've had to utilize a lot of energy to come back in previous games, prior games. Hardy misses the three. It is... Out of bounds to Western Kentucky. I thought I was going to have to change my prescription in my glasses. <laughs> right. You got it right. Out of bounds off of Moore. And point three put back up there for UTEP. Miners need something in a hurry. Got to shoot three here. Camper. Nice. Three goes. Beautiful execution. One timeout for both. Ooh, yeah. Got away with a push off there. Ooh, he got away with a push off Lander. That would have been costly. Offensive foul potentially on Western yeah. Kentucky. You thought that one could have been called. Watch this. Watch his right arm. See, see the extension? Joe Golding saw it. Lander gets the first of two. That's ten points in the game for Lander. They have three in double figures now. Get some both. Well, we know somebody who's going to enjoy this win. Yes, the team and the coaches, but our favorite trombone player. <laughs> Kentucky's band with the beer. Avery's favorite. <laughs> Last gasp for UTEP. Frazier gets the bucket. Joe Golding uses his final timeout with 
playing it to the end. It's a seven-point game. Strucky players in double figures. I just thought because of their depth, you know, their offensive team, even without Allen. Again, Western Kentucky's done it without one of their starters and key contributors, Dante Allen. Missed tonight's game with a knee injury. He suffered in semis against Middle Tennessee. McHenry stepped out of bounds. It's UTEP ball with 19.3. Got to come to a two-foot jump stop on the catch. Last time UTEP was in this situation, they ran a cute play for a three, so we'll see if they can get another. Hardy pulls up for three. Misses. Rebound to Western Kentucky, and the Hilltoppers are close to dribbling it out. Newman, no foul for UTEP. Western Kentucky will dribble out a 78-71 win. The Hilltoppers are champions of Conference USA. Western Kentucky back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2013. A Conference USA title.